Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to my garden. Today, I'm going to do a little garden tour to show you everything that I'm going to be harvesting for the purposes of drying. It looks like we're going to be getting six days of rain and we're going to be getting into the low 40s. My main concern here is all the rain. I'm harvesting things before they have the chance to brown or fall over and perhaps get trampled on. And it really is that time of year when it's time to harvest for drying. So let's take a look around. So this year I want to make two dried flower Christmas trees. I want to make a silvery purple one. That's going to be my main dried flower Christmas tree. And then I also want to make one with some dried red elements. I have some celosias and some amaranths that I want to use. I want to try to create cardinals out of those celosias and then maybe kind of a woodland theme tree. So not all dried flowers on that one, but maybe all kind of natural elements, pine cones, maybe some homemade bird feeders, bird's nests, things like that. But so what I'll be picking today and you know, as things dry out, is this Bergarten Sage. Bergarten Sage dries beautifully and will give us that nice silvery blue texture on the tree. I won't harvest anything from over here. I did have some amaranth that's already harvested and dried. But from over on this side of the garden, last year I dried some nine bark just by accident. It just dried in an arrangement and I thought it dried beautifully. So I'm going to harvest a lot of that for the purple silver tree, just to have some nice depth in the tree. Because we really only are gonna be working with a few ingredients this year, unlike in past years where there was lots and lots going on. So let me show you something that was a little bit sad that I noticed the other day. It was about two days ago I came out here. It's the very end of October right now. And I saw this monarch here on this dahlia and unfortunately I think he's passed away because he hasn't moved in two days. This bee, I'm not sure about him, there's been lots of bees and butterflies around that just aren't moving anymore. That's always really kind of emotional to see that. It's been so wonderful to have their presence here in the garden and it's always just so sad to see them go. But I guess if you have to go, the garden is a good place to have your last breath. So let's go down the main flower walk. Of course, we're going to be picking all of this Mexican bush sage for the tree. It's prime time for picking. You can see when I run my fingers along it, it doesn't really shatter. It's not dropping petals. It's nice and tall and erect, and it's time to be picked. This also smells wonderful. It dries true to color, true to shape, doesn't really lose too much volume in the drying process. Let me show you one that's kind of a little too far gone. This is why I do want to start picking it. You can see if I run my hand along this, it's starting to lose a lot of its blossoms. I was doing this last night to kind of see what was good and what wasn't. So I really want to come out here and start to harvest these because we're expecting six days of rain and nights in the 40s. I'm not really worried about those nights in the 40s. I'm more worried about all that rain in combination with the cold, just turning everything brown. And I don't wanna have put in all this hard work to lose it at the final moment. So this is gonna be probably our last look at the Mexican bush sage for this year. Now, normally I would dry a lot more fever few but I just ended up using so much of it fresh this year, there's not too much left to dry. And here's what I mean about, you know, if you kind of miss it and it turns brown. Now this is turning brown because it's just old, but that can happen too if it just gets too much moisture. And six days of rain would certainly do that. Now you'll see my limelights here. I did pick two big buckets of limelights to use. I'm not sure what tree we'll use them on or if we'll use them on the tree at all, but at least we have them. We'll definitely go ahead and pick as much lavender as possible, including the foliage for that nice silver color. I may go ahead and pick some of the plumes from my grasses. Maybe we can work those into the cardinals, but sometimes they tend to make a mess. Um, and then if you spray them with hairspray, they don't move quite as nicely. So I think I'll, I'll ponder that for a while. 
and see if I want to go for those plumes or not. Now over here on the left, you see the lamb's ear. I'm not going to pick that yet, but last year I did a video where we made Christmas ornaments with lamb's ear, which is a Christmas ornament that I always made with my grandma. So I'll be making some more of those this year and adding them onto our purple and blue foliage Christmas tree. And you can see I've started to cut some of the perennials back like the peonies. I don't think we have too much over here in the way of drying. I just have my box soy there that I cut on when needed. So if we travel down here, we'll see the jewels of Opar. I'm gonna be harvesting all of these for our cardinal tree. And I'm just really, really excited about that because I think it's going to look like Christmas lights on the tree to have these glittering balls everywhere. Don't you think so? Back behind it is a celosia I'm growing, which I feel like I never mentioned that it was back here, but it's a really great one. It's called Asian Garden, a nice deep purpley pink. And I was harvesting some of this yesterday, and that's when I thought, you know what, I better stop and do a little bit of filming so that you guys aren't questioning, hey, where did the garden go <laughs> before I go ahead and pick all this? Here's a shrub I just added in the other day. I'm pretty sure it's called Berry Heavy Gold. It has really nice big yellow berries. I really enjoy it. Now this can't live here. I think it gets about six by six feet tall and wide. So it's gonna go in my grandma's garden, but it's gonna go in this hole right here. I have some bishop's weed that has decided to appear in there. So I need to eradicate that before I move a shrub over into that area. Now we do have a few stems of Dusty Miller left over here. I've been using a lot of Dusty Miller this year for fresh arrangements. So we'll have to use this sparingly in our tree, but you just can't beat that frosty tone of Dusty Miller. Maybe I'll see if my girlfriend will sell me some of hers. We can take a brief look back here at the raised beds because people were talking about my cool flowers and I'll show you what they're looking like right now. So here's my bachelor's buttons. We have some snapdragons here. If we turn to the left, we have more snapdragons. Here we have a couple rows of larkspur. And just for a frame of reference, today is October 24th. I suppose all these plants have been in here about a month. The main problem I'm having is with, as you can see here, squirrels digging and trying to bury, bury stuff in here. This is what my Ami looks like. This is the green mist. And this looks good. This all looks like the size that I want things to be. I'm just a little bit sad about the digging. So I guess covering might be something I want to explore. This whole bed is Dara. And I'll show you the size on that Dara. Over here we have the Bells of Ireland, and I don't thin anything until the spring. I plant really close together, just in case I lose stuff over the winter. A few rows here of Sweet William, and then back here we have Nigella. This Nigella is usually a little bit further along this time of year. I'm not really sure what's going on, but perfectly fine nonetheless. So the dahlias are starting to peter out, but in terms of drying, and my fingers are all dirty now, I have been drying a lot of the breakouts and I really like the way they dry. I'll make sure and put a picture on the screen. So I dried some breakout, I dried some diva, and I dried some great silence. So that'll be the dahlias that we have to work with. Other things that I dried from the raised beds are some Orlea pods and some delphinium. But over here in the hydrangea garden, I don't think we need to pick anything else because most of the hydrangeas I wanted for drying, I already picked a little bit earlier in the season. I didn't pick too much Invincible Spirit too, but if you look over here to my Annabelle, you can see that pretty much all of the blooms are gone because that's what I decided to harvest mainly this year. I don't think I harvested any Haas Halo for drying. I did harvest this strawberry sundae hydrangea. Let me get you a close up on this. Look how beautiful this is. I love that one. I think I'll go ahead and pick some more blooms from this one. 
maybe for the cardinal Christmas tree. This is where I have most of my big leaf hydrangeas, which I'll show you on the screen now. They've already been harvested for a while and they're fully dry and ready to go. I may go ahead and harvest some of this lemon jade sedum. I always get kind of a pit in my stomach when I go to harvest sedum because I kind of had a nightmare happen to me one year with drying sedum and then they ended up being covered in aphids and I didn't notice until it was kind of an extreme situation. Of course I had to toss all the sedum and I had to toss a lot of other things from my drying rack. You know, just out of negligence, honestly, I just didn't notice it in time. So I might pass on that. <laughs> Maybe we don't need the risk. I think I'll go ahead and harvest just a few blooms of this Tough Stuff Aha Hydrangea, just for a different texture. You know, now that I'm looking at all these hydrangeas, still looking usable. Maybe I should do three trees, a hydrangea tree too. <laughs> I've done that in the past before. I think this is how the whole dried flower Christmas tree really got started was when I was just doing a dried hydrangea tree and then I just started to add more and more dried flowers. I've already harvested quite a bit from this garden for drying. I harvested all the flamingo feather celosia last night. Of course I have the star flower already dried. I have lots more hydrangea in this garden dried. So really what needs picked still are these celosias. So we have the beautiful dragon's breath celosia. I might try to give this one one more week because I've seen this get a lot bigger than it is right now and maybe just risk it. I'll definitely be harvesting all this new look after this video. And I think this is what I'm going to try to form the base of the cardinals from. Somehow I have to figure out what should be the head, what should be the body and the tail, but it kind of has a bird look to it already. There was lots of alliums in this garden which have been harvested and are on my drying racks. And then I'm not sure where we'll use this, but we do have sylphid, so we'll go ahead and harvest that as well. Lots more Mexican bush sage needs to be harvested over here. And this is where you can see my final attempt at a last planting of sunflowers. So like I said, it's October 24th. This is how they're looking. There's actually no frost in sight as I looked forward to November 7th, just tons of rain. And you can see what, not necessarily the rain, but the high winds have done over here. You know, in retrospect, I should have done this last planting in a box um, in the back and full sun where I could corral things if I felt like we were gonna get a big storm. But I just don't have a free box right now with all the cool flowers and the dahlias back there. So you live and you learn. We'll try again next year. You can see the beauty berries are looking lovely. But the only thing left to harvest over here for drying, I think, would be this limelight. I wanted to show you this and do a comparison. This one is really in full shade and you can see it's really almost not burned at all. So I think I'll go ahead and harvest these as well. I would rather have them on hand and not use them than regret picking them and then they'd be kind of brown and mushy from all that rain. Grace has decided to make her way in here, but let me show you the Limelight Prime and the difference. And I've never picked catmint before for drying, but I think I will give some of that a try because it does have that nice kind of blue silver foliage to it. So look at the difference here in the color and the limelight prime. Now, of course, this one's in full sun and the standard limelight is back there, but still a really significant color difference depending on what you're looking for. And I think I'll go ahead and harvest some more blooms of this. It does burn just slightly, but like I said, this is really in full, full sun and full exposure to the elements over here. One other thing I'll pick is this abelia. Abelia dries and it looks just like this. It really doesn't change at all. So I wanna pick this for the Cardinal Christmas tree as well. Well, my friends, I think this is, whoa. <laughs> I think this is pretty much the look around for today. It looks like Grace has, <gasps> she's awoken the butterfly. Oh, what's going on with this butterfly? Oh guys, I don't know what's going on. So you can see how I succeed at keeping Grace out of the garden, right? <laughs> 
But anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the tour today, guys. I'll go ahead and get to harvesting. I just air dry everything. If you're looking for a great book on dried flowers and getting some inspiration for projects, I would recommend the book Everlastings. Um, that's by a woman over in England. Her name is Bex. Oh goodness, I can't remember, but I'll put a link in the description section. It's really inspiring, talks about different methods of drying, and I think you might enjoy it if you want to check it out of your library or something like that. But my friends, I think for now I'll just say happy gardening and happy drying flowers. Bye! Okay, Grace, you want to get my snips? What do you want? You want to give me a spin? Can you give mama a spin? No. <laughs> okay. Let's go inside. <laughs>